And let's uh, have uh, a conversation about this same subject now with Michael Shank, who is Director of Foreign Policy at the Friends Committee on National Legislation, joining us from our D.C. Bureau. Uh, Michael, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Okay, this, uh, this idea that uh, the Europeans now are willing, in principle, to deliver arms to the Syrian rebels. As Dr. Olmert was saying, it is only a principle at this stage. There's uh, no direct plans as far as we know uh, to send uh, you know, boxes of weapons to the rebels tomorrow or this week or next week. Uh, but how important is it as a statement of intent? Well, as a statement of intent, it's pretty dangerous because it comes on the heels of U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry's meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov yesterday in Paris which outlined the peace talks in Geneva next week, uh, next month rather, to call for both a ceasefire and a transitional government. I mean, at the beginning of this clip, you made the case pretty well for a ceasefire, uh, given all the armed actors involved who might be interested. But also you made the case, and Dr. Olmart made the case, for better accountability of weapons flows. Not only Russian weapons flows to Syrian government, but, but also with the lifting of this arms embargo and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee's decision last week to arm the rebels, we're looking at weapons flows that could go pretty much anywhere in the region. Take a lesson from Libya. We armed the myriad opposition groups there. Those arms trickled down into Niger, Nigeria, Mali, uh, Djibouti, Somalia. So too with Syria, no rebel group is unified here. The Syrian opposition council doesn't have the secular front that the U.S. wants. And so they're diverse and they're fractured. And so if we arm them, we're looking at similar weapons flows. You can't guarantee the Syrian government is going to use Russian weapons in the way we want them to or the way Russian wants them to. But so, too, with the rebel groups, you're looking at arms flows that might trickle down into hands uh, extreme or not extreme. So you're, you're saying that we are best leaving it alone, leaving the Syrians and the rebels to sort this out themselves uh, in a civil war that could drag on for another 12 months, another two years. And we could see the, the numbers of dead, currently around 80,000, easily double. No, I don't think we should leave it alone. Without question, we need to be engaged, which is why we're engaging Russia, which is good. But we're not engaging Iran. We're not engaging Lebanon. We're not even engaging Hezbollah, which clearly has a stake in Syria. We're not engaging Israel as much as we should. No, here's the next step. We need to make sure that Brahimi, who's a special rep from the UN to Syria, is replaced because he's stepping down. We need to make sure that track of diplomacy is continued. But Obama and similarly Congress, I mentioned the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is arming the rebels. No, they need to be supporting John Kerry and Sergei Lavrov at this point with the talks in Geneva either next week or next month, the date is yet to be decided, when they're going to hammer out a ceasefire. And, and that's what we need to focus on. We need to talk about the transitional government. They're figuring out the specifics. But to arm rebels at this point or to arm the government, arms on either side, is deleterious to this diplomatic track and undermines this, this critical moment we have with diplomacy. So, but this diplomacy for the moment, in your, in your view, Michael, is the way forward. We have to, this, uh, the Geneva Conference is important. Uh, and diplomacy may well mean some sort of role for Assad hanging on. Uh, a lot of the rebels say that that's, that's just a non-starter. Right, it's a deal breaker. And this is where Kerry and Lavrov are, are hammering out the details because certainly the U.S. government wants Assad, wants a guarantee of Assad to step down, where Lavrov is saying, well, maybe he should have a role or we should leave it up to the people. And Assad wants the election to happen in 2014, thus kicking the can down the road for eventual democratic elections. Clearly, it should be left up to the people. That's where democracy matters. That's where the vote matters. But real pressure on the diplomatic front, simultaneous with serious humanitarian aid. You're looking at 7 million in desperate need, mm. 7 million Syrians in desperate need of humanitarian aid. But, you know, I was in Syria in 2005 meeting with the ambassador at the time, Ambassador Margaret Scobie, and this was before Ambassador Ford. But Ambassador Margaret Scobie didn't speak Arabic. She wasn't meeting with the Syrian officials uh, at the level that she should have been. And so we have this history of diplomatic engagement. So we have a real opportunity now. Let's at least seize it before we start arming both the rebels or the government. If, you, if Russia is headed in that direction. So at least give diplomacy a, a, a quick moment here. Mm. Uh, Senator McCain uh, of Arizona, Senator John McCain, has been one of the more hawkish voices on uh, uh, how much assistance we give to the rebels, Michael. Uh, how helpful or unhelpful was his uh, quick visit into Syria over the weekend? Right. So he, like a few other members of Congress, have visited the border and gone in just briefly. He's talking about setting up patriot buffers that would shell the government and protect uh, refugees. My concern there would only be that it's going to escalate the conflict further and might draw more Syrian government airstrikes 
on safe havens for refugees along the border with Turkey. Turkey doing its best, Jordan doing its best with refugees. So we have a serious refugee crisis, not unlike what we had with you know, Iraq and, and certainly Afghanistan as well. But I, I think the lesson here, what we learned from Libya, because Libya post Gaddafi is still a fractured state. Rebel groups across the board aren't agreeing with each other. So if we begin to even tap into this dissent within Syria by arming the similarly fractious rebel groups and a non-united opposition, uh, we face a, a, a serious escalation of, of further violent conflict. So I think diplomacy is, is the only way forward, as I mentioned on FoxNews.com in an op-ed I wrote this morning, um, at least for the time being, let's pursue that seriously. All right. Uh, very interesting viewpoint. Michael Shank, uh, as you said, your piece is up at FoxNews.com now on our opinion pages. Uh, there it is on the screen, the only way forward on Syria.